you want to learn how to start a YouTube channel in 2020 or you're a returning subscriber and just watch my videos because you're a nice person. <laughs> Either way, today's video, I'm going to go through some tips, hints, stuff you need to know when you're starting a YouTube channel so you guys can start a YouTube channel in 2020. So I thought a good place to start for me to go through why I made YouTube videos and why I started my own YouTube channel in 2016. I started making videos because I thought it would be a cool hobby to do. I was playing a load of games at the time. I started streaming on Twitch. So I thought it would be a really cool thing to do. I'm not going to lie, I saw people getting success from it and I thought I want a piece of that pie. But ultimately, I saw it as a new opportunity to learn an amazing skill. Video editing, marketing, and all those types of things are amazing skills that you can transpose and use in your own day-to-day -day lives. I also did it for the ladies, <laughs> because that's really work. I thought I'd go through some pitfalls that you usually find when you start a YouTube channel and you start making videos. I thought that some of the stuff that I have fallen down on that I might tell you so you don't make the same mistakes I did and I'm still doing. First thing that everybody will experience when they create a YouTube channel is sub for sub. Usually you find somebody comes in, slides right into your comments. Hi, how are you? I'm a content creator. Please sub to my channel. I'll sub to yours. I'll watch all your content, don't worry. It's usually <laughs> You all sleep on a bed of lies. No, what usually happens is they get you to sub, they might sub to you, they might not. There'll be no interaction, they won't watch yours, you won't watch theirs. You might put effort in to watch theirs and comment on their stuff, but you will not get it back, it's very rare. What you don't want to do is have a load of sub for subs where you've got, oh look at me, I've got 200 subscribers, and then when somebody comes to your video and you've got 10 views, it will only hinder you doing a sub for sub. Don't worry about subscribers, they will come. As long as you're persistent, consistent, and you actually are a good person and your content is good, then people will stick around. Another misconception is I don't have the good enough equipment. I don't have hundreds and hundreds of pounds to have the equipment to do YouTube. That's not a thing. Nowadays, you can get HD webcams, microphones, capture cards. They're all relatively affordable. What is affordable is the camera I'm using right now and the microphone that is down here. Those two pieces of kit, when I bought them, were under £70. Now, that, that is still a fair chunk of money, but I've had these two pieces of kit for three years now, and I, I think with the amount of videos I've done, um, streams I've done, other things I've used it for, it's more than paid for itself. Yes, you can go out and buy all the mega camcorders, the three, four hundred pound microphone, which is amazing. The thing you need to crack first before you do equipment, because equipment, you could spend a lot of money. It's like when January comes around and you think, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym. So then you go off and buy the most expensive trainers, the most expensive gear, the most expensive gym membership, and then just don't go. It's the same with YouTube. So if you don't know that you're going to stick around, I wouldn't pay a lot of money for equipment. The thing you need to crack first is your content. What content you're doing, getting used to editing, releasing, fan base, all that stuff is a little bit more important at the minute. I know that there is a content war on YouTube, so if you don't have good quality content, as in HD at the very minimum, uh, and good quality audio, you are going to fall behind a little bit but you'll learn all the other skills that you need. So then when you know that you're enjoying it, you wanna keep doing it, you wanna progress, you wanna get better, then you can invest a little bit more in your equipment. My last massive pitfall, and one that I learned very, very early on, is that your channel won't grow overnight. You'll be very lucky to release your first video it be an absolute banger. You'll release a video, no one will watch it. And that's not because it's not good, it's just that you haven't learned how to publicize yourself. Your video is not out there, people can't see it. There's a lot you've got to learn, there's a lot you've got to do, and you've got to put a lot of time into it. Right, now that the doom and gloom of the pitfalls are out of the way, I'm just going to fire out a load of tips and then just see what sticks. A tip that you might not see in any other learn how to create YouTube channel, how they're calling their videos. Get used to filming yourself. Now that just seems really weird and you're probably thinking, oh, it's, it's easy, you sat in front of a camera. It is very difficult when you get started. Different things like remembering to always look into the camera, not get distracted by watching your screen. I still get distracted by what's on my screen. <laughs> I've been doing YouTube for four years and I'm still learning about being in front of a camera. You'll also find that the first time you sit in front of a camera, you'll freeze. Unless you've done it before, or unless you're a really confident person you'll probably freeze. You'll have something in your head, but you'll stumble across your words or you'll freeze and it'll just go out your head or you might get nervous in front of the camera. The One of the best things to do is just to get used to being filmed. You can do that by just filming five minute clips of yourself, just talking, rambling, or...
But once you've done that a few times, you'll get more confident. And when you do video after video after video, it'll be like it's not even there. It's It, it becomes a non-factor. I'm just smashing tips out of the park. Here's a tip. Oh, bang! Very important thing to know before you start your YouTube channel. Knowing how you're going to do it. How you're going to film yourself, if you are. Are you going to be on camera? Are you not? How are you going to record your audio? So you're speaking on it. You don't necessarily have to. You can do montages and stuff like that, which doesn't have your voice or your picture on it. But if you are doing vlogs, or you're doing gaming videos, or you're doing whatever, or commentary, you will need to record your audio. How are you going to do that? Video editing. What software are you going to use? How are you going to edit it? How are you going to release it to YouTube? If you're doing gaming videos, how are you going to record your gaming? There's a lot of factors that you'll have to sort of have penned in and know how you're doing it before you start it. And I would also figure out with your editing software is that you can render in the correct format for YouTube. You can get the list online of what types of files YouTube takes, but you need to make sure that your editing software, before you put a lot of hours into editing videos, that you can render it in the style that YouTube likes. In terms of equipment and editing software and how I record gaming videos, Videos and all that stuff. I can make another video on that if you want. You just put it in the comments below. I'll make another video of like what equipment I've got, what editing software you should use. I can even do a how to edit video on that editing software so you can get a feel of like how to edit certain things. But to bring it all back round and full circle, you need to figure out how you're going to do all the stuff that you want to do and if you are actually capable with the equipment you've got. But I cannot stress enough pick an editing software that you are comfortable with using. Now I have one that I use and I think it's really good, really easy to use and really intuitive. You need to find one that you're comfortable with using because you're going to be using it a hell of a lot. But when I say comfortable, I don't mean easy. What you don't want to do is pick a very basic editing software. There's a lot of editing softwares out there that don't allow you to do certain things or it makes it incredibly difficult to do. Stuff like uh, removing green screen, uh, chroma keys in certain editing softwares are very poor. Different styles of edits, transitions, effects, videos that have different different frame rates being in the same video. You just need to make sure that the editing software works with what you've got in terms of style of video you want to do. So I'd try and, you know, I'd sample them out. But then I would also look for an editing software that allows you to do some of the cool edits that you may want to do going forward. And if you have used this video to learn how to do YouTube and you do YouTube and you get hundreds of thousands of subscribers from it, I expect a shout out. <laughs> I've mentioned this earlier in the video, but I kind of feel like I need to say it again. Your first video will stink. Every YouTuber's first video absolutely reeks. Most YouTubers remove their first sets of videos because they're that bad. I lay down with my crotch in a webcam for a minute and 20 seconds in my first video. And look at me now! But it will. Y your first video will be terrible because you don't know how to do it. You don't know what content you're doing. You don't know who you are in terms of a YouTuber yet. Unless you've done editing before, editing takes a long time to learn and perfect. I was leaving sneezes and erms in my first video. <laughs> I always liken a f YouTuber's first video and it being bad to riding a bike. You if you've never seen a bike before and you've never ridden a bike, you wouldn't expect to get on the bike and be able to ride it straight away. You're going to fall off. You're going to stumble. You're going to need other people's help. But then once you get that base and you then can ride the bike, then your videos will get better and better and better. You'll start to do videos non-handed. What I want to stress is it being bad isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. It means you get opportunities to look at what you're doing wrong, what to change. You will learn a hell of a lot from your first five videos. Your next five videos will be a lot better than your next five, than your next five. You need to be as prepared for the lows as you are the highs. Now everyone knows what the highs are on YouTube. You'll get a load of views. You might get a load of subscribers. You might get a load of likes. Your video might get posted somewhere. The lows are things like you've taken 10 hours to film and edit a video and no one watches it. You don't know how, when you're starting out, demoralizing that is. But what you need to think about, why isn't that video doing as well as the other video? Or what am I doing in this video? or what haven't I done marketing wise, which means nobody's watching it. You need to take the lows as a opportunity to grow. When you have that video that goes woof, that's when you learn. So you go, right, not doing that again, or I didn't market it correctly on Twitter, or uh, I didn't post it to my friends, or I didn't post it in a community. The audio is bad, the video is too long, the content's not great, the title isn't great, the thumbnail's not great. You get to learn a hell of a lot from your lows, as much as you do from your highs. The ones that do really well, why did it do well? But you just need to not be disheartened and not take it personally. You just need to see it as an opportunity, take that video, watch it back yourself, see what you'd have done differently, and then try and suss out, is it the content? Or is it how I've done it? And then you'll be able to, in your next video, see what you've done wrong, make it better. And if you see it then 
grow again, then you know you've taken a step into the right direction. YouTube, I think, I'm not being soppy here, has changed my life. I, in 2016, was a shy introvert that wouldn't say boo to a goose. I'm comfortable with being filmed on webcam. I'm comfortable speaking, I'm comfortable releasing a video and people hating the video, people giving me hate. I'm comfortable with all of that. I'm now finding myself being more confident in public. The amount of stuff I've learned, if I was to stop now, I could probably use the skills I've learned in a job in real life doing similar things for other people. If you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, it is unbelievable. But you do need to remember, it can be hard work. So that's it for my sort of tips and hints of how to start a YouTube channel in 2020. I hope to see all of you on YouTube. If you are doing YouTube and you are creating a YouTube channel, I would be interested to see what your first video is. You can see mine. I haven't deleted it. You can go back and look at it. It's been in one of my previous videos. It's absolutely horrendous. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Peace.